Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this lecture, we'll be understanding about the classes. Now, this is the basically starting of the OOPS, Object Oriented Programming. We'll be understanding how a class is collection of functions and attributes. We'll be understanding what is the role of the default and parameterized constructor. We'll be seeing how they are used in initializing the attributes of the class. Because we'll be doing everything practically. So let's move on to the computer. We'll be learning about classes, default constructor, parameterized constructor through running programs. Like this is a program for parameterized constructor. I'm running it. See, this is the output. Length is 5, breadth is 8, and area of return is 5. So how this is appeared, we'll understand this code. And we'll be understanding what are classes, how the default constructor works, and everything we'll be doing it through running programs. So watch this video up till the end. This is lecture number 16 of Python. Classes being a very big topic, it is split into 2-3 lectures. For example, we'll be learning about what are classes, what are default constructor, what are parameterized constructor. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about the difference between class method and static methods, what is the usage. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about inheritance and so on. So, without wasting time, we'll start with the first program. Now, first thing, what is classes? Classes creates a namespace where certain attributes, that is variables, and methods, that is functions, are kept. That is, the collection of functions and variables in one lot is known as a class. So, what is the benefit of it? When you make an object of a class, a copy of the whole attributes and method is assigned to that object, to that variable, right? You can make several variables, several objects of one class. What will be the benefit? The changes made by any object to its attributes, that changes will not be seen to the attributes of another object. So, this was sort of encapsulation, sort of an isolation between the attributes and methods, right? We'll see to it. So, this line says that a class begins with the keyword class and the attributes, that is the variables or methods can be accessed by using a period, that is a dot between a class or its instance. We'll see to it how. Now, this is simplest class without any function, but with two attributes. See, this is a class rect with two attributes, length and breadth, and their value is initialized to 8 and 5 respectively. These are basically class variables. Now, what is the difference between class variable and instance variables? We'll be just seeing it. Now, this class has no function, but only print statement which displays these class variables values. Length is percent %d. So, control will jump out and will display the value of l, attribute of which class? Rec class. So, by writing rec.l, the value of 8 will be displayed over here. Breadth is, the moment control will see percent %d, it will jump out and will Substitute this percent D with the value of rect dot B. That is the value of the B attribute of rect class. So, 5 will be displayed over here. Let us run this simplest class which is without any function. See, length is 8, breadth is 5. Okay. Now, in this program, we learn how to make object. Object or instance is nothing but the variable of a class. And when you create an object, the copy of an attribute and method is assigned to that instance or object. This is a class with two class attributes, length and breadth, initialized two value 8 and 5. There is no function, no print statement also. Doesn't matter. Here you are making an object R or you can say that you are making an instance R of rec class. So what will happen? Whatever is there in this class, a copy of it will be assigned to R. So R will get two attributes L and B. And the values of L and B will be set to 8 and 5. You are displaying something. Length is R dot L. The value of L of R object is 8. Breadth is R dot B. The value of B attribute of R object is 5. Area of rectangle is and you are displaying the multiplication of the two. 8 into 5 is 40. So you can access the attribute of any instance by making use of a period between instance and its attribute. And similarly, you can access the functions of the class also. We'll see to it soon. Let's copy this program. Length is 8, breadth is 5, and the area of return is 40. Right? Next. See, in this class, you have made use of a function also. So, it confirms our definition that class is a collection of functions and attributes. This is a class with two attributes, length and breadth and one function rect area. Now, let's come to the main function. Here you are making an object R of rect class, right? So, what will happen this R object will get this L and B initialized to value 8 and 5. 
and we will also get this rect area function. That is, this R object can call this rect area function as well. Let's see how area written is R dot rect area. So control will come over here. Now what is this self? See, when any object invokes any function, it sends itself also as a first parameter in the function. So this self refers to the object which has called this function. R has invoked this rect area function. So this R is sending itself to the function. So this self is pointing to R. Return rect dot L. That is the length attribute of the rect class. That is 8 into the B attribute of rect class. That is 5. Can I write here self dot L into self dot B? Obviously. While running we will see to it. Okay. So let's copy it. Area written is 40. Can you see it? Now I will replace this rect by self. Self means the R object itself. And R has been assigned this L and B. Right. Now I will run it. See. Area written is 40. Can you see it? Now one thing more. What is this class variable meaning? See class variables are those attributes which are shared by all instances. Does it mean that if I make another instance. I am making another instance S. Will it get these attributes and a function? Yes. So there are two copies of attributes and function. One copy assigned to the object R and another copy of attributes and function assigned to the object S. Both will not interfere to each other. But these are not the instance variables. In the next program we will be understanding about instance variable. At the moment these are class variables which are common, which are shareable among the objects. So this S will also get L and B equal to 8 and 5 respectively. If you want the L and B of object R should not interfere with the attributes of object S, we have to make use of instance variable. And if I display the rect area of object S, see area of rectangle is 40 for both. So that proves that class variable is shareable among all the objects, among all the instances. Instances and objects are one is the same thing. Now a class has some special methods which begin and end by double underscore and one of those special method is init. This function is automatically executed when an object is defined. That means you don't have to invoke this init method. The moment an object of a class is defined, the Python will search for this method and if it is there, it will be automatically executed. The purpose of this special method is to initialize the attributes of a class. See, if you don't initialize the attributes of any class and use them into some expression. Obviously, those attributes will have the garbage or null value and that is for sure that we won't be getting the desired results, right? So, initialization of attribute is very essential and that is done through this method in it. Now, what is the default constructor? I will explain it here. See, here you are making an object R of right class, right? How many arguments you are sending while creating a class? Nothing. So, that means pattern will look for an init method without any parameter. Now what is self? Self is the object which is invoking this method, right? And it is always there. So there is no parameter here. And this init will be automatically executed when an object is defined. So the moment an object is defined, Python will come over here. It will confirm that there should not be any parameters. When there are no parameters, this is known as default constructor. Through this print statement, you get the message on the screen, this is default constructor. Self, that means the object itself, that is R. The attribute L of object R should be initialized to value 5. The attribute B of object R should be initialized to value 8. So it confirms that the constructors are meant for initializing the attributes of an object. Right. So control will come over here. Area of rectangle is you are invoking the rect area method through R object. Control will come over here. Obviously self is understood to be there. Right. Return self dot L. That is the length attribute of the R is multiplied with the breadth attribute of R and the result of multiplication will be displayed over here. So this is the example of default constructor. Let's copy it. See. This is another way of defining the default constructor. See. You are defining an object R of red class. Python will search for an init method. Right. And obviously this self is the object itself. These are the default parameters. I assume that you have seen my function lectures. There were 9 lectures of functions in Python. And there was a lecture on default value parameters and keyword arguments. Look for that lecture. I am providing you the link in the description box. Do watch all the lectures of the functions. 
Because what are classes? Classes are the collection of attributes and functions. So you will understand classes very well if you have a strong concept of functions in your mind. Okay. So these are the default value parameters. Self dot L. This value of x will be assigned to the L attribute of the object R. The phi will be assigned to L of object R. This value y that is 8 will be assigned to the B attribute of object R. So these default value parameters are used to assign values to the attributes L and B of object R. Here you are invoking the rectaria method. So control will come over here and it will display multiplication of L and B attributes of object R. Let's copy. See. So default value parameters can be used in the default constructors. Now this is parameterized constructor. How will I know this is parameterized constructor? See. You are making an object of rec class and here you are sending two arguments. That means now Python will look for the init method with two parameters and it will find two parameters here. If the parameters not match, if you don't provide the parameters here, you will get an error. Right. So obviously this file value will be assigned to the parameter x. This 8 will be assigned to parameter y. So it confirms that while defining an object, if you pass arguments, you need to define a parameterized constructor in your class. This is a parameterized constructor. So file is assigned to the parameter x. 8 assigned to the parameter y and from there they are assigned to the L and B attribute of the instance R. Here control will come. Area of rectangle is R dot rect area. So rect area function is invoked. Self dot L into self dot B. That is the length and breadth attributes of the object R are multiplied and displayed. So you get the value 40. Now what is this str? See str is a method which is used for displaying the information of the object. That is the attributes and functions of the class. If you want to display them for debugging, you can make use of str method. And when this method is invoked, when you print an object or when you convert an object into a string. Now let's see here. Here you made an object R. Yes. Now you are printing R. You are printing the object R. The moment you will print the object R, compiler will search for this str method and will invoke it. So it will return length is the value of self dot L will be substituted at percent D. That is the value which is assigned to the L attribute of the object R. Breadth is and the value in the B attribute of object R will be substituted over here. So the length and breadth values will be displayed when this print method is called. Right. As I told you that this str method is invoked when you convert an object into string. So if I invoke str method on object R, this str method will be invoked and whatever it is returning will be assigned to the variable k. So the k will get the value length is and the value of the L attribute, breadth is and the value of B attribute. That line, this output will be assigned to the variable k and by print statement you are displaying it. I repeat, this str method is just for displaying the attributes and method and it is mainly used for debugging purpose. So let us run this program. See, this length is 5, breadth is 8. This is displayed when you displayed the object R. Because while displaying the object R, this str method was invoked and it returned this output. Length is 5, breadth is 8. Area of rectangle is 40. That is displayed by invoking rect area method. Now, let's comment out this printing of object and let's invoke the str method of the object. Let us see whether it is displaying this length and breadth value. See, if you followed this lecture, see this is a small glimpse of the homework that I am giving you. The homework is that you have to compute the average of three variables p plus q plus r divided by three and the values of p, q and r is not given. So you have to ask the user for p, q and r and while invoking the object, while creating the object, you have to pass the values of p, q and r and you have to use parameterized constructor for that, right? If you are able to do this homework, please inform me through the comments. If you followed this lecture, please subscribe to my channel, share the video with your friends and do write comments. Thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day.